Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. So today, just like it says here, I'm going to talk a little bit about cytomedrol use when we have our asthmatic patients. Um, you know, this is one of those drugs that we have in our arsenal, and a lot of places do use this. Um, but there is a little bit of a hesitation sometimes, and a hesitation is the question of why should we be giving it in the field since it takes so long to work. It's one of these drugs that don't work all that fast, and a lot of times we won't even see it working, right, by the time we get to the hospital, okay? And a lot of systems, a lot of EMS systems, have even taken cytomedrol out of their protocols because of the fact that it doesn't work that, that quickly in the field and the hospital can go ahead and give it. And it's a financial thing, right? Because they don't have to pay for this one more drug, okay? So it's that mentality as well. So there's reasons why, you know, people start having this mentality of not giving it, you know, to our patients in the field. So I'm hoping that this quick presentation is going to maybe... Uh, bring home or maybe kind of uh, highlight some reasons why we can give it in the field and some of the benefits of, of this drug. So what is the drug? Well, basically, cytomedrol, guys, it's a steroid, uh, and it helps as an anti-inflammatory. It helps the smooth muscle relax. So that's the, the, the key thing, and this is what we're looking at when we're talking about asthmatics and what we're looking for this drug to do, okay. Um, a lot of other things go on with this drug. You know, there's contraindications. There's some some side effects that we have to may, may, may have to consider. But for this presentation and what we're talking about, uh, this is what you need to look at, okay. The anti-inflammatory aspects of the drug, and the fact that it potentiates the smooth muscle relaxation. Now, what are the dosages normally in EMS? Well, the biggest dose, the most common one that I've seen and that I've, I've, I've looked at is 120, 125 milligrams. Now, I have seen protocols that give it 1 to 2 milligrams per kilogram, and I've also seen protocols that say to give it between 40 and 125 milligrams. And usually that 40 to 125 is usually based upon a patient's size, age, medical history, medications they might be on, and, and that dosage range, a lot of times, that's usually a medical control option where you call the doc, you request to give this drug uh, and give the doctor a report, and the doctor will give you like something within that range of 40 to 125. But 125 is usually where we're going to be sitting at when it comes to giving it to our asthmatic patients, right? Now, the route, usually IV push, uh, IV slow push, where you're giving it, let's say, 125 and 50 to 100, 100 cc's of normal saline. Normally, that goes over about 20 minutes or so, 10 to 20 minutes. And then we also have the intramuscular route as well. Now, this is going to depend upon your protocols. I've seen it in many different ways. Some places give it intravenous push without putting it in 50 to 1 cc's, and you just sort of push it as a slow through a saline lock or through an IV port. Um, it's going to depend, okay? Um, and I've seen other protocols that, that don't give it slow at all. You're just giving it, okay? You just give it IV push without you know, any sort of, uh, of thought process when it comes to the speed of what you're giving it. But I think the most common way to give it is an IV slow push and giving it in 50 to 100 cc's of normal saline, okay? And you drip it over the, over the patient and over about maybe 10 minutes or so, okay? That seems to be the common thread in a lot of guidelines that, that I've looked at. Okay, but again, it's going to depend upon your protocols, where, where you are, and what it is that you're allowed to do, and how they expect you to administer the drug. Now, here's the thing with this drug as well. It's kind of got a tricky vial. If you look at this vial, you're like, what the heck is going on with this sort of drug concentration, right? And the way this works, you've got a... Um, on the bottom here, you've got a sort of powder solution, and you've got a liquid solution on top, and what you're doing is you're you're mixing the two to constitute the drug. Now, I've got a little video here that I'm hoping is going to show up on the video, so let's take a quick look here. I'm just going to walk through. There's no sound in this video, 
but it shows you the you know the methylprednisone, otherwise known as cytomedrol, and uh, they're going to show you how to constitute the drug. And you see, you're pressing down here, okay, on the on the top part, the activator, and then that little that little plunger falls through, releasing the liquid and mixing it in. And you shake it up a little bit to get the powder dissolved. Once you get the powder all dissolved, you're going to want to get ready to draw it up so you can administer the drug too, right? Now, one you can now this little plastic piece on top is what covers the area to put the the needle in to withdraw the drug. Sometimes that might break off when you activate it, or might break off partially, or you might not, like he just did. You're gonna have to do the entire thing off. So it depends, and you're gonna want to clean that, of course, with your alcohol, alcohol prep, or whatever it is that you use to clean. Now, if you look real close, you'll see a little circle here. Okay, where you're going to put your syringe in to go ahead and, and draw it up, okay? I don't know if you're able to see that or not, but there's a little circle in the middle of that field, okay? And you go ahead and search, search the, the syringe, and you draw up the drug, whatever it is. Now, usually this size is about 125 milligrams um, automatically, so that is the, the basic size of the drug. Okay, so that's it for just a quick little demonstration. I hope you're able to see that. I'm going to play this back and hopefully you get to see that. So, here's the thing we mentioned earlier, guys, right? It takes so long to work. What are we giving it for? The onset, usually about an hour, but it peaks between 6 and 8 hours, sometimes even 6 to 12 hours, right? Depending on who you talk to, what you read online. Okay, what book you're looking at? All right, so it, it does take a long time, and for most of us, our patient is at the hospital well within that one hour, and by by you know certainly way before the six to eight hours or six to twelve hours, right? So again, we are thinking ahead. Why are we giving it in the field, right? Because this is the type of drug we want to get on board the patient. We want to. Get it going because you don't know how long the hospital is going to take to give it when you get there. They might give it right away. The patient might sit there for a half an hour, 45 minutes before they get the drug, right? So think ahead. Think about the benefits that the patient is going to have, okay? Because what's happening is the nebulizer treatments we're giving, the the, the, the breathing treatments we're giving are, are sort of taking care of the inflammation, but it's so it's temporary. It's not treating the underlying inflammation and this drug can help treat that underlying inflammation right so while it might take a few hours for this to start kicking in it's going to treat the underlying inflammation and stop this asthma attack the, from recurring over and over again right because the cytomedrol usually we're using it for those moderate to severe attacks. It's not your basic everyday attack where you're going to give a treatment and the patient clears up and you take them to the hospital for some observation and they go home, right? But speaking of going home is that when we give this drug, early administration of, of cytomedrol, the patient has a less of a chance to being admitted to the hospital if we can get this drug on board and it starts to act, right? So that's what we're looking to do. Treat the underlying inflammation, letting the patient benefit from the drug and not have to be admitted to the hospital, okay? So try to give this drug, if you can, all right, early on for your moderate to severe attacks, okay? Because you know, if you've been doing it for a little while, that the, the nebular treatments, they're not going to necessarily work well, they're only going to work temporarily, and you've got to get that underlying inflammation, you know, treated. Okay, there's studies that are done, guys, that show, like like I have here, that this early administration, you know, really lessens the patient uh, percentage of being admitted to the hospital. So, what's the takeaway, guys? Of course, you're going to follow your local protocols when it comes to the dosages, whether you can give it standing order, whether it's medical control. Um, whether you even have it at all in your protocols and the route, whether you're giving it IV push, IV drip, um, a slow IV or intramuscular, that is an option as well. Guys, 
if the patient condition warrants it, if your clinical assessment tells you that this patient needs something more than just your nebulizer treatment, right, go ahead and give the drug following your local guidelines, okay? So, guys, I hope you can use these Monday Minutes. Guys, go consider checking out TurboMedic.com and getting this all-in-one study and training resource. Guys, it's a membership site. It's a unique membership site where we can interact with each other there, and you can interact with other EMS professionals as well and build your knowledge base, guys, with everything from downloadable files to audios to videos. We're doing web, web apps. We've got some interactive um uh, uh, webinars that we do, okay, build your knowledge, base, your knowledge base, guys, and walk into your exam. Every patient encounter, you, encounter that you have, do it with confidence, and consider going and joining it, me over on TurboMedic at TurboMedic.com, okay? Guys, if you can use these Monday Minutes, please do so, guys. Be sure to post some comments below, either right here at YouTube, over on the blog, emsofficehours.com, or send me your comments and suggestions for a, a uh, Monday Minutes to me directly. My email is admin at emsseo.com. I would love to hear your feedback and some suggestions you have for Monday Minutes and some tips that maybe other EMS providers could benefit from. Guys, that's it for me. As always, guys, stay safe and enjoy these Monday Minutes, and I'll see you next week.